All right, do we have an interesting video topic to talk about today? I think any paramotor pilot, as they go through their progression in the sport, they encounter some ups and downs, and sometimes those downs are pretty bad and uh, include breaking gear or maybe a, s a small injury of some sort. But you recover from those, you learn a lesson, and you move on and you become a better pilot because of it. Now, luckily for me, I was obsessed with filming stuff from the very beginning. I filmed pretty much every flight, and recently I went through one of my old hard drives and I found a couple clips of uh, times that I messed up, specifically as a beginner. I'm gonna call these beginner mistakes. Let's go ahead and roll the intro and then we'll get right into the footage. This is some good espresso. Shout out to Black River Roasters. So I've got three mistakes lined up. Now, it depends on your perspective of how bad these mistakes are. Looking back at them, I feel like a complete idiot. Some of them were just so dumb, and it's like, what was I thinking during that time? From that perspective, they're kind of bad, but if you take a bigger picture, a lot of peers that I've talked to that have been in the sport about the same amount of time as I have, Many of them share these crazy, insane, gnarly, near-death experiences, and I'm like, wow, I never had anything like that. I never saw my life flash before my eyes or never threw my reserve, never broke any uh, bones or anything like that, no bad injuries. So overall, these three mistakes were pretty dumb, but I feel very fortunate. This is the worst of the worst, so just keep that in mind. To give you guys a little context, I learned in August of 2013 at Aviator PPG, this first clip comes from May of 2014. Now somewhere in the middle, around January, I sold my beginner wing, which was a Buzz Z3 or something, it was a paragliding wing, and I picked up a Dudek Hydron 20 meter. Now with this new wing, I was slowly working into learning wing overs and building up a little bigger, a little bigger, trying to keep my progression under wraps, but eventually I went a little too big and didn't hold enough outside brake and that's what this clip depicts. As I was building up, you could see by the month I was going a little bit bigger and a little bigger, feeling more confident, using a little more power, getting deeper into the wing overs and that's what led to this. I just went a little bit too big and didn't hold my outside brake, my right brake enough to keep that right side from deflating. The bigger mistake in this situation was I was pretty low. I remember at the time uh, looking at this video clip and pausing at still frame and being like, I'm kind of low when that happened and that's kind of scary. So it was a good reminder, a healthy reminder to one, take my acro up a little bit higher and dial it back and learn that outside brake pressure. Overall, this mistake wasn't that bad. I think this happens to a lot of people as they're learning wing overs. Wing overs are such a finesse thing that it almost takes being in the seat yourself and screwing it up a couple times to learn exactly what you have to do. And honestly, this is the only time I ever recall blowing the outside wing tip off like that while learning wing overs. So overall, not bad, but it was a fun little learning experience. Now my next one, this is the one that I almost feel ashamed to show because it's just so stupid, but hey, I was a year into the sport at this time. This was August of 2014 on the same wing, the 20 meter Hydron, and let's just roll the clip. So here I am, it's a beautiful day, I'm just flying around, I'm having a good old time, and I start pulling big gears on the Hydron, and it doesn't do the best big gears, you really have to pull the line hard and far to get the big gears to go. And I was just messing around with that, kind of seeing how the wing reacts, folding the wing tips under. And then here comes the stupid part. So dumb. So what happened there is I'm fiddling with my big ears like I, I was doing, totally fine, that's normal to do. And then I got the bright idea to grab the inside A and just yank it down. That's how you cause an asymmetric collapse. At the time, I was just purely curious what would happen. 
Um, obviously this was after I took that small collapse and I think part of me thought like, well, I'm working up the bigger wing overs, maybe it would be good for me to experience what would happen if the wing collapsed so that I know what it would do if it did it unintentionally, I don't know. It was sheer stupidity and I was just honestly curious to find out what would happen. But the stupidest part about this is you notice my brake toggles are stowed. And if you were gonna pull an asymmetric collapse on a wing like this, which you shouldn't re really be doing in the first place because this is like an unrated wing, it's not meant to recover very well. The proper procedure would be to hold the brakes in your hand because what prevents deflations is brake deflection. So that means you would pull the collapse and in order to get it reinflated faster or if it didn't reinflate, you would pull brake pressure. I didn't even have the brakes in my hands. So if you slow mo it, I yoink on that A, the thing freaking collapses like it's supposed to do when you yoink on the A, and my hands are just up here batting around trying to get to the toggles like an idiot. Wing goes down and to the right, riser almost goes into my face, and then it recovers and I fly away and finally get my toggles and I'm like, well, that was a freaking rodeo. But going back and looking at this footage, it reminds me how naive I was at the time. I, I had been flying for a full year and I was getting kind of more proficient at wing overs and I was so naive to think that I could just pull the A down and induce a collapse on this wing without even holding my toggles. Like, it's just dumb. Ugh, espresso went cold. All right, so this third and final clip is from about a year after that. This is September of 2015. I was on a new wing at this time. It was a Snake XX 16 meter from Dudek. And I was on my first Scout, which was a Scout Enduro. And uh, I went out on a little cross country flight. I took off from an airport, flew out to a park, landed at the park, and I was taking off again from the park in this clip. So here we go, I'm doing my thing, checking my surroundings, and I go for the launch, pull the wing up, and as I roll onto power and I'm launching, you start to hear a little noise. So obviously in this clip, I notice the noise and I start looking around, I check my lines and I'm like, something obviously hit my prop and I didn't know what it was. Um, but I checked my lines. I decided obviously to keep going with the launch and get off the ground, um, but nothing seemed that out of place. I had no idea what had hit my prop, but I decided to keep flying anyway. As the story goes on, I fly back to the airport. I make a safe landing. I get on the ground and as I unclip my motor, there's a big hole in the netting right behind my head. So what had happened, which I found out later as I pre-flighted my gear and investigated the problem, was that the two engine mounts on the bottom, there's four of them, two on the top and two on the bottom, the bottom ones had started to rip. And what that caused was it allowed the engine, as the thrust was applied, to tip forward because the mounts were actually separating. So my whole motor and propeller were tipping forward and uh, actually hitting the netting with the propeller. And that was really scary because imagine those mounts had ripped or it had gone even farther, it would have chopped off the spars and my head was maybe only six or eight inches away from that propeller. So there were a couple good lessons here. First off, if you hear a noise on launch, your propeller's hitting something, abort the launch. That's always the best cause. My motor could have fallen off mid-flight for all I know. Second, pre-flight your gear, because that's definitely something that I could have caught on a pre-flight at the time. Aside from chewing up the netting, like this could have been much worse. It could have destroyed my propeller, destroyed my uh, spars, potentially hit me in the back of the head. And depending on if it had ripped off at a certain time, I could have crashed. So pre-flight your gear, and if you hear something that's going wrong, just abort your launch. All right, so that's my top three that were actually filmed. Let me know if you have any ideas. Um, drop them down below of like top three or top five type videos. One good idea that I saw someone comment was uh, top three landing sites, like interesting landings or something like that. So I might dig through some footage and put a video like that together. 
We've got new designs out right now. I'm rocking the paraphrase t-shirt and we also got the Alpine sunset t-shirt on the website. So get one before they're gone. We print these things in a big batch and then once they sell out, we generally don't restock. But I think that's about all for now. The weather's looking good outside for tonight. So I'm gonna get ready to go fly and make another video for the YouTubes. I will see you guys in the next episode. Till then, peace. Zzz.